One of these women is the first female snow ranger in the United States. What is your name, please? My name is Jerry Colburn. My name is Jerry Colburn. My name is Jerry Colburn. Only one of these ladies is the real Jerry Colburn. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Dina Merrill, the star of the Broadway hit Mary Mary, Barry Nelson, and Peggy Katz. On to tell the truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Brought to you this week by Bristan Decongestant Tablet. The new three-layer tablet for effective relief from sinus congestion, hay fever, and cold distress. Barry, welcome. Fine, bud. Tell Good me, how, how are you at sorting out the oh, truth from I, the lie? Oh, uh, I expect to come in with brave heart and leave with a murmur. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, panel. Hello, bud. As always, it's a real joy to be with you again. Would you kindly open up your envelopes and take out your affidavit cards for the first time and follow along as I read from this one. I, Jerry Colburn, am an expert in avalanche control. Each winter, I conduct an avalanche school for highway patrolmen, utility company personnel, and the National Ski Patrol. The course covers the cause and prevention of avalanches and all phases of mountain rescue. I completed the course at the U.S. Forest Service Avalanche School. The school accepted my application because they thought Jerry Colburn was a man's name. Not only am I a woman, but I've raised seven children to prove it. I'm the first officially recognized female snow ranger in the United States. Signed, Jerry Colburn. Set and comfortable, ladies? All right, panel, you heard as did I, each of these three ladies claiming to be Jerry Colburn, avalanche control expert. Let's begin this first round of questioning with Dina Merrill. Dina? This is a, a, a wonderful thing. We just had a terrible disaster, as you probably mm. all know, out in Colorado a few weeks ago. My husband was just out there, and I was mm. so grateful to find that he wasn't in that avalanche. Uh, number one, who is, uh, who is the head of the U.S. Forest Service? I don't know. Number two? Paul Walsh. Number three, do you agree with that? Danny Peck. Dan? Danny Peck. Danny? Danny. Danny, Danny Peck. <laughs> uh, number one, uh, tell me how you prevent avalanches. Um, you can prevent avalanches through a stabilization, barriers, and restrictions. Uh, number two, is there some other way of preventing avalanches? Well, of course, you can shoot them down. That's what I meant. How uh, do you do that? Well, there are two ways to do it. One is where, by hand, that you use uh, grenade type of gadget to do that, and the other is with howitzers, which is the more common way, really. Barry. Uh, number one, um, wh who is your superior? To whom are you accountable? Monty Atwater. Pardon? Monty Atwater. And what is his position? He is head of the uh, avalanche control, control at Squaw Valley. I see. Number two, uh, how long have you uh, been, uh, uh, how long have you been a, a ranger? Well, I went to the school six years ago in Alta, Utah. Number three, how many people have you actually rescued? Only one. Um, number one, uh, do all your children <laughs> ski? Yes, they do. Uh-huh. Peggy. Uh, there was, uh, number two, recently there was a big avalanche in uh, South America. In which country did that happen? Peru. Um, could you please, uh, number three, could you please tell me, when there is an avalanche and people are killed, what do they usually die of? Suffocation. Uh, number one, do you agree with that? Yes. Uh, number two, uh, how old is your oldest child? Seventeen. Seventeen, and you've been a snow ranger six years. Um, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, um, and number three, why do the utility companies need avalanche control? Well, because of for, uh, potential falls over power lines oh, and uh, roads. I see. Uh... Tom. Thank you, bud. I think I may have figured out a foolproof way of finding out who the real person is. Uh -huh. Now, as I understand it, the real one must tell the truth. Is that correct? That's right. Well, number one, 
Are those other two ladies Jerry Colburn? <laughs> Don't answer that. <laughs> I warned our producer before the show that I had a foolproof way. I think he was sweating this one out, but I didn't really want you to answer. You'll have to admit, though, that it's foolproof. Number one, what is repelling? Do you know? Yes, it's lowering uh, with a rope. Thank you. Number two, uh, how do you recognize a prospective snowfall? Well, there are several ways. Weather reports are probably as good as any. Uh, thank you. Number three, at what height is oxygen necessary in... Uh, 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 what, at what height does uh, lack of oxygen become a problem in, in the mountains? In the mountains? Well, for me, about 16,000 feet, but a lot of people don't have that capacity. That's all the time we have. It's time for you to mark your ballot. So will you do so now, please, panel, without consultation? And as you do so, of course, vote as usual for number one, number two, or number three. And our team of challengers, as usual, will get $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? I, yes, I've got a, an answer uh, here. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one. I think uh, 16,000 is probably a little high, and repelling is not a too common a term. Maybe it wouldn't have been covered by our indefatigable Willie Stein. Nina, which one did you select? Well, Willie did an awful good job this week. <laughs> I, I voted for number two, bud, because she, she looks like a skier to me. I, mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't know, I ski a lot, and, and I just think it's number two. <laughs> okay, Barry, which one do you think is the real one? Well, they're as delightful a set of triplets as I've ever met, and I think it would be unseemly to discriminate, so I just shuffled the cards and came up with the two of hearts, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Peggy, what about you? I voted for number three because she has short hair. And if you have long hair in the snow, it gets all icy. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I've heard reasons and reasons. And that's as good a new one as I've heard in a long time. <laughs> and there we have it. Our votes are in. Our minds are made up. Are yours? Let's find out now how right or wrong we may be as we learn which of these ladies is the real avalanche expert. So, will the real Jerry Colburn please stand up? Right. Incidentally, Tom, your system is not foolproof because all each one would have to do would be to answer no. I've been thinking about that. If each one answered no, I am, then the real one would say, when well, you asked the other two, the real one would tell the truth and the other two would lie. Have to figure out another way. I'm sorry. It won't work. <laughs> Let's find out about these other two right now. Very good liars or falsifiers, as they may be called. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Constance McKenna. I'm a native New Yorker. I am a skier. <laughs> and uh, during the daylight hours, I am a senior copywriter on a leading toothpaste. Ah, <laughs> pretty smile to go with it. <laughs> Thank you very much. And number three, your real name and what do you do? My name is Ruth Fesky, and I'm in the advertising field. And I do national fashion advertising for women's and children's uh, clothes. Something else you want to add? I should add that I don't know beans about skiing. <laughs> well, you did mighty well, because in checking up with the score, as I can see in front of me so clearly, there were three incorrect votes, and that's not bad with this panel, believe me. Three incorrect votes at $250 each is a total of $750. Not bad for an evening's pleasure, which we hope you had. You certainly added to ours. You also receive a package of gift products from the fine, of the fine products made by Dristan, and we thank you again. Good night. God bless you. Now let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Oren Hood. My name is Oren Hood. My name is Oren Hood. Again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, Oren Hood, have my own radio show on the island of Maui in the state of Hawaii. I am also a bowler. I was invited to compete in the world's first bowlathon, which was held in New York this January. I won the championship with a high score of 288 and a 74-game average of over 190. 
In compiling this record, I bowled for 24 hours without a stop. This was really no great strain on me because in Hawaii, I once bowled for more than 60 consecutive hours. I am the world's champion marathon bowler. Signed, Orrin Hood. Three gentlemen panel, each one claiming to be Orrin Hood, world's champion marathon bowler. And let's start this round of questioning with Barry Nelson. Barry? Uh, could you tell me, uh, number one, could you tell me the uh, name of the main, uh, your, uh, the other league, the main competitor to your league? To our league, this was uh, done in a, a, on a charity basis, this uh, tournament. Right, number two, could you tell me the um, name of the uh, professional bowling league, the, the leading professional bowling league? The American Bowling Congress? Yes. Yeah. Uh, number three, uh, what is the principal city in Maui? The principal city of Maui, there is none. Number one, who is the professional bowling champion? Uh, Dick President. Carter. How long, uh, number two, could you tell me how long it would uh, take to train normally to become one of the top 10 bowlers of the country? About 10 to 12, 10 to 15 years. Peggy. Number one, uh, what is the name of the big island? Well, the biggest is Hawaii. Uh, number two, where do they hold the international surfing tournaments? Which beach? Uh, right off Waikiki. Uh, number three, do you agree with that? It's off the Waianae Mountains. Uh, number one, do you know the name of the beach? Uh, Waikiki. Um, number uh, three, uh, did you like have uh, rest periods in the 24 hours? No, ma'am. Just uh, number one, no coffee break? No, no, no nothing. <laughs> between oh. between the games. So. Number two, you just went 24 hours without any rest. Completely. Tom Poston. Number two, what's the principal town on your island? Uh, I live at. Uh, White Luku. I'm sorry. I, uh, <laughs> uh, number three, what does wowing in mean? What does it mean to wow in? To wow in? Yeah. I've never heard of it. It's a radio term. Do you know what it means, wowing in? No, sir. Do you know number two by any chance? No, sir. Number one by chance? No, sir. Uh, number one, what, what's the name given to that high-pitched uh, sound that a microphone gives off once in a while by mistake? I don't know. Do you know number two? Feedback. Thank you. Number two, uh, from where does the term spare derivate in bowling? Uh, it's the hit, hitting down with your second ball of the balance of the pins left. But why a spare? There are no balls left. Uh, on the second ball, a spare is when you leave uh, a pin standing and you knock down the balance of the balls with your second uh, balance of the pins with your second ball. Thank you. Dina. Number three, what's the name of the mountain on Maui? The mountain on Maui? That's Mount Haleakala. Uh, number two, were you there during the war? I was there in uh, Hawaii during the war. On the island of Hawaii or Maui? Uh, on uh, Oahu. On Oahu? Yeah. Uh, number one, were you there during the war? Uh, no, I was not. I was educated here and went back. That's it. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. Well, no, no. anybody who looks at Dina gets a little confused and fussed. Get your well contacts understand. in because this is no, sir. <laughs> and no, sir. Further questions now. We have to, without consultation, mark our ballot. So will you kindly oh, do oh, so oh. now? Yes, I was waiting for somebody to ask. And me. vote as you do so for number one, well, number two, in. or number three. All well, set, Tom. Which one did you select this trip? Well, I voted for number three. I, I know they should have known what wowing in is. You know, don't you, Bud? No, I never heard the expression. Remember when? Uh, as long as I've been in the business, I never have. What does it mean? <laughs> when the guy says, "Ollie Blue here." Oh, that's called wowing in. Yeah, when you come in from a remote, ah, you know, and wow, the gain is up learn. too high, and you say, "No, Ollie." <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dina, which one did you select? Well, I voted for number three too, Bud, because. It, he knew the name of the mountain on Maui, and I, maybe Willie Stein's done some good briefing this time. Oh, you know he has. <laughs> Barry, you're well, well. I, I voted for number three. Uh, the other two, Dan and Tom, have given some very profound reasons. I just sort of feel that anybody who bowled that long must have gone through an awful period of dehydration, and while he looks in good shape, he's the thinnest. <laughs> Which one did you select? I voted for number three as well because the international surfing tournaments are, are held at Makaha and not at Waikiki. Uh -huh. All right, there again, we have answers and reasons and choices, and let's see what we do now as we discover who's who and what's what. 
to learn which one of these gentlemen is the real marathon bowler champion. So will the real Oren Hood please stand up? Oh. <laughs> oh, you didn't pull the panel that time, I tell you, right down the line. Three, 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 three. <laughs> Oh, my. Panel is too smart, that time, I'm afraid. But number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? Uh, my name is Dick Spaulding, and I'm Eastern Sales Manager for Pacific Air Motive Corporation, and I sell airplanes. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and last but by no means least, number two, your real name, and what do you do? My name is Bernard Aguinaldo. I'm president of Aguinaldo Associates Insurance Brokers, and I've lived in New York City all my life. <laughs> Before, there were no incorrect answers, but in that case, uh, from Dristan, you receive $150. And we hope that makes your smiles permanent and that your lives will be happy as you leave us, having left us happier for your visit. And also, you will receive a gift package of products from the makers of Dristan. Good night to you, and God bless you. Thank you. Panel, may I present our next team of challengers? What is your name, please? My name is Christopher Blair. My name is Christopher Blair. My name is Christopher Blair. All right, panel, you've had a look. Now give a listen, if you will, and follow with your copies of this affidavit. I, Christopher Blair, was in Morocco in 1958 when a devastating flood hit the area. Since I was fluent in both French and Arabic, I volunteered my services. The United States Navy flew me into the stricken area to organize the villagers so they could be evacuated by helicopter. For my work in this emergency, I received a personal commendation from Admiral Burke, and the King of Morocco made me a gift of two prize Arabian horses. Signed, Christopher Blair. Ready to play our game, gentlemen? Yes, sir. Very well. Panel, you heard, as did I, and uh, they all are claiming to be one Christopher Blair. Let's find out what's what here as we start this round with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, bud. Uh, uh, number two, uh, what, what caused the flood? Uh, river overflowed. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, number two, where was this? It was in Morocco, in the... In, in what? It in was what? in Morocco. And what, what, uh, what area? What? In the Rarb Valley. Thank you. Number three, were there a series of disasters connected with this great flood? No, it was one single event. Uh, number one, could you tell me some of the identifying characteristics of an Arabian horse? An Arabian horse is about 15, two hands high. It's smaller than our thoroughbred, but not as fast. Uh, number two, what is uh, some more characteristics of the Arabian steed? Well, it is um, renowned for its stamina and, uh, and, um... Dina, thank you. Number three, what were you doing in Morocco when was, this happened? I was stationed there on official duty. Uh, with what? The United States Air Force. I see. Uh, number two, what were you doing there? I was there with my family, my Num father. Number one? I was an executive pilot for an oil company in Morocco. Uh, where did you learn Arabic and French? I learned it during World War II while I was stationed in Algiers. I see. Number two, what is, it, what is the, the name of the king of Morocco? Hassan II. Uh, number three, how many wives has he got? He's not married. Huh? <laughs> as a joke, so <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Barry. Uh, number one, what you do with the horses? I had them back in Parma, Ohio. It took a year to, kind of, to bring them to this country. Thank you. Number two, could you tell me the names of the horses? Uh, Sucia and Negra. Number three, uh, could you tell me um, the main bordering states on, uh, next to Morocco? Yes, on the <clears throat> east is Algiers. On the south is uh, Mauritania and uh, Spanish Sahara, and of course the west is the Atlantic Ocean. Number uh, one, uh, how long did it take to evacuate all these people? It took three to four days. 
Number two, where did you take them? Um, we took them to uh, our base of operations. Number two, what was your base of operations? <laughs> our base of operations was an unflooded road that uh, led out of the area. Did you just leave them on the unflooded road? <laughs> there were, no, there were trucks to uh, I take see. Them out. Number two, what is the capital city of Spanish Morocco? Uh, number three, could you tell me the capital city of Spanish Morocco? Of Spanish Morocco? Yes. I don't recall. Number one, do you know? It's Robot. Uh, number two, how come you know Arabic? I learned it while I was stationed there. No, number two. Oh, number two. Number two. Yes, number two. How come you know Arabic? Well, uh, when I lived there, I had to learn it to it, converse with na the natives. I see. And your family was stationed there? That's yes. all the time we have, so we have to get again to the business of resolving this entire truth or falsehood by marking our ballot. So without consultation, will you do so now, please? And as before, vote, of course, for number one, number two, or number three. Everybody set? Well, all ballots marked? Well, Dina? No. <laughs> I'll record a vote there so we can get to it. <laughs> Hands up in the air. And the plunge gets. Okay, Tom, for whom? Well, uh, I wanted to vote for number two very, very... I didn't. I done voted for number one because of the, of the forthright way in which he answered the questions. Not that the other two gentlemen didn't, too, but uh, I felt that it was number one. I did want to vote for number two, though, because he seems like a nice chap. Dina! <laughs> <laughs> well, it was all a puzzlement. <laughs> I felt number two was too young to have done all this, and, and I was a toss-up, I know, I'm sure. <laughs> it was a toss-up between one and three, but, but one seemed to me to, to uh, he told me he was a pilot out there with an oil company, that seemed logical to know Arabic, I just voted for him. Barry. Well, I, I was impressed with uh, Tom's humanistic approach to this, and sentimentally I was for all three of them, but uh, it seemed to me that somebody might have inquired what the man wanted for a prize, and number one seemed to know a great deal about horses. Huh? Well, I think that's Okay. Peggy. Well, I voted for number two because I thought he was keeping something from me. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Peggy. Well, all right. Let's see which one is the right approach now. The one that keeps something from you or the one that is more direct and straight from the shoulder. As we learn which one of these gentlemen is the real Christopher Blair. So, will the real Christopher Blair please stand up? <laughs> oh, thank you very much, sir. Chris. Suppose you tell us, since this subject came up, how old are you? Seventeen. That means that you were 14 years old when you took part in this rescue? Yes, sir. Well, bless your heart, boy. That's really something, believe me. We're proud of you. Glad to have you on the show. Oh, thank you. Let's find out about the others now. Number one, as you said, you got most of the votes. What is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Keith Abbott. I appraise buildings for the American Appraisal Company all over the world, and I live in Philadelphia. Thank you. Thank you. And number three, your real name and what you do, please. I'm Colonel Edward Marshall. I'm Director of International Fair Consultants. We design and construct pavilions and buildings for the New York World's Fair of 1964. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, the score is easy to check this time. There were one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 each. That should bring an even broader smile to your faces. That's a total of $750 from Dristan, as well as a gift package of fine products from the makers of Dristan. And thank you, gentlemen, for being with us. Good night. God bless you. Unfortunately, all good things have to come to an end, and that's all the time we have for tonight. So, good night to you, panel. Good night, Good night, Brian. Good night, Brian. Good night, Brian. I just like to know what number two is going to do for an encore. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I don't know. It would be worth considering, however. And this is Bud Collier saying good night from Dristan and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Codman production.